Okay, everyone, I am going to get started. So uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, Nikui's webinar. Uh, and this one is on the National Health Service Corps. Uh, my name is Bethany Rose, and I'm a policy analyst with Nikui. And I'm going to be focusing on the changes to the loan repayment um, program and the scholarship programs following the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and we're also going to focus on the changes to the Indian Health Services uh, loan repayment and scholarship programs. So here's an overview of, uh, of what I'm going to cover this afternoon. So first, uh, what is the National Health Service Corps and how has it changed? Um, it's also important to understand what the health professional shortage areas and NHSC approved sites are. So we're going to be fully covering those. Um, I'm going to be covering the differences between full-time and half-time service, uh, and that is an option for some uh, core members' commitments. Uh, there are three types of programs in the National Health Service Corps, the scholarship program, the loan repayment program, and the students to service uh, loan repayment program. Uh, finally, we're going to cover the IHS scholarship and loan repayment program um, because both of these have similarities to uh, the National Health Service Corps programs and, uh, are, and we're going to cover some uh, good resources as well. So if you have any questions, these might be where you should go. So the National Health Service Corps was founded in 1972 uh, to bring health care to areas that need it most by connecting them with health care providers. Since its creation, over 40,000 individuals have served, and there are over 10,000, or about 10,000 members currently serving over 10.4 million individuals in the United States. Uh, the National Health Service Corps offers financial support and other kinds of support to its members. Uh, many individuals continue to serve in these uh, health professional shortage areas, uh, which are known as HPSAs, um, after their initial uh, service commitment. It is a federal government program under the Department of Health and Human Services, and everyone involved in the National Health Service Corps is dedicated to preventing illness and disease, ensuring access to health care, and caring for the most vulnerable populations that might not otherwise have care. So what is a health professional shortage area? Um, these are geographic areas, population groups, or healthcare facilities that uh, have been designated by HRSA, the Health Resources and Services Administration, as having a shortage of health professionals. Um, there are three general categories of these um, shortage areas um, in primary care, dental health, and mental health. Each um, HIPSA has a score based on the number of factors, including population to clinician ratios um, that we have listed here, um, as well as uh, the poverty rate, uh, the amount of time it takes to uh, get to the place of um, care. Uh, some of the other factors are specific to each separate category, um, including the presence of fluoridated water for dental care, the prevalence of alcohol or substance abuse for mental health care, and the infant mortality rate for primary care. OK, so next up we have. Ah, it went too fast. OK, NHSC approved sites. So the Indian Health Service and the Urban Indian Health Clinics are now considered approved sites, um, this change under the Affordable Care Act. Um, so because of this, if, um, uh, sorry. So if your site isn't um, an IHS or um, a federally qualified health center, you still have to apply to become um, an NHSC site. So you should, if, if you are a qualified site, you should uh, notify your current staff members uh, that they might be eligible for loan repayment assistance uh, through the National Health Service Corps. Uh, and make sure you inform individuals who are interviewing as primary care uh, providers that your site is approved and so that they could be eligible for the loan repayment program as well if they accept a position at your site. Um, 
one of the best things about the uh, National Health Service Corps is that they have a job center available for posting and updating uh, current job openings at your site. And so this online job center reaches thousands of individuals, and these are people who are either current healthcare professionals or prospective ones that are actively seeking work within this program. Um, as far as the scholarship program is concerned, um, through the National Health Service Corps, each site is eligible to have one in each of the um, eligible discipline categories of the scholarship program, which we're going to cover in a moment. Um, however, sites can uh, request an additional scholar on a case-to-case -case, uh, basis. Okay, full-time and half-time. Uh, so there are two types of commitments an individual can make through the National Health Service Corps. Um, and what it is is it can either be half or full-time. Um, not all of the NHSC or IHS programs allow participants to do half-time uh, clinical practice and most require that your commitments be uh, full-time. Um, full-time clinical practice means that core members will practice for a minimum of 40 hours a week for 45 weeks a year. Uh, Half-time half clinical practice means that um, individuals will serve between 20 and a maximum of 39 hours per week for at least 45 weeks per year. Um, initial contracts for this program are either two years or four years. So I want to summarize the changes um, that have been made to the National Health Service Corps and the Affordable uh, Care Act. So HRSA and IHS have designated all of the IHS facilities um, as NHSC approved sites. Um, these facilities are going to be able to recruit and retain primary care providers by using this program and using the Job Center. Um, more generally, the health care reform is helping to create and expand um, centers throughout the country and it, um, and it helps individuals spend more time with their doctor. So the NHSC uh, scholarship program is um, works to award scholarships to students that are pursuing an education in primary health professions, um, training in any approved um, discipline. So in return, these students provide um, a commitment to provide health care to communities in need after they graduate and complete their training. Uh, these scholarships are comprehensive. They include tuition required fees like technology fees, um, laboratory fees, necessary equipment, uh, and other reasonable costs like textbooks. Um, all these things are tax-free. There's also a monthly stipend, however, and that is not tax-free uh, for students, and that is considered taxable. And these scholarships can last for a maximum of four years. Uh, scholars, as scholars prepare to graduate and serve in the National Health Service Corps um, approved sites, the staff will assist individuals transition out of their educational phase and into practicing their chosen health profession. Uh, they do this by connecting them to the job center that I mentioned before and uh, will support their travel expenses to and from interviews at the specific sites. Um, there are limitations to the number of interviews that um, the National Health Service Corps will financially support them. After these scholars begin working, they are supported through uh, networking opportunities, connections to different community resources, uh, further and um, access to free continuing education units, which are often known as CEUs. The NHSC Loan Repayment Program provides vital health care to underserved communities throughout the United States and its territories. It is open to any individuals that are licensed in mental, or sorry, in medical or dental primary care and uh, medical and behavioral health providers that are employed or seeking employment at health professional shortage areas. Clinicians may be eligible for an initial award of up to $60,000 for two years of full-time service or four years of half-time service. Uh, the HIPSA score matters because it impacts how much money clinicians receive. So if you, if you have a score of 14 or higher, they can receive up to $60,000. But if you have a score of 13 or lower, they can receive up to $40,000 maximum. So after the initial commitment, individuals can continue uh, to provide service 
because the NHSC will provide them with the opportunity to pay off all of their qualified um, health professional student loans. So the Students to Service Loan Repayment Program has limited qualifications for students. They either must be an allopathic or osteopathic um, medical student uh, in their fourth year at an, at an accredited medical school. Uh, this program provides loan repayment assistance in return for a commitment to provide primary health care services um, to HIPSAs that have the greatest need. They have to, individuals serving must serve at least three full-time years or six half-time years in order to receive $120,000 to repay their student loans. Um, with continued service, the entirety of their loans can be paid off, but it's important to know that all, not all uh, educational loans qualify. Uh, they have to meet certain criteria and relate to health care. Um, this loan repayment program does not just count towards medical student uh, loans, it also uh, counts towards undergraduate loans if they're qualified. There's also a, um, a state loan repayment program and it's optional for primary care providers that are deemed eligible in participating states. Uh, providers will apply to the individual programs uh, in their state and not through the National Health Service Corps. Uh, this program is a federally funded grant program that assists states and territories operate their own programs for providers that work in health professional shortage areas inside their state. So as you can see on the map that I've provided, not uh, all the states participate in this program. So states like Idaho and Wyoming and Texas choose not to participate in this program. The state loan repayment program requires matching funds from the state applicant and the administration of the program by the state agency. So the states participating have to agree to make non-federal contributions in cash towards the contracts available uh, through, the student, through the state loan repayment program. Because this program varies from state to state, um, eligible disciplines, the length of required service, uh, the amount of repayment awards offered, and the practice sites available vary. Um, this is a program where part-time service is available. Um, like other um, National Health Service Corps programs, the state loan repayment program is only for individuals working in health professional shortage areas. So um, and the new designations under the Affordable Care Act are applicable to this program as well. So let's put some of these things into context. So when the Affordable Care Act passed in 2010, uh, big changes happened in the National Health Service Corps. At the time, only 60 tribal sites were eligible for the National Health Service Corps. Um, now over 600 sites are eligible for this program. Uh, when we're talking about tribal sites, these include IHS and uh, Urban Indian programs. So as of the end of July, there are currently 341 clinicians serving at tribal facilities in the United States. Uh, these individuals fall into the categories we've discussed earlier today. Um, so it isn't the end of the year yet, so this number is still expected to rise through the end of the year. Um, last year in July, for example, there were 266 clinicians serving at tribal sites. So in a period of a year, there's an increase of 28%. Uh, there are currently 128 open positions at tribal facilities um, on the NHSC Job Center. So this is a tool that we know is being used in the, as, on an increasing uh, rate by these different facilities to recruit staff. Just to be clear, using this Job Center that they provide is free. Um, and earlier this summer, they had a virtual jobs fair used specifically for tribal sites trying to recruit employees. Um, and these tools are here to help you, you and your facility recruit with no cost to you at all. The Indian uh, Health Service has a similar scholarship program available, but it's far more limited in who can apply. Uh, all applicants um, must be um, Alaska Native or American Indian. Um, it is specific in not only the type of applicants allowed, but the limits of where the commitment is filled. So in exchange for a two to four year obligation, 
uh, individuals in this scholarship receive full tuition, fees, and other regional, reasonable education costs tax-free. Um, like the NHSC scholarships, the monthly stipend is taxable. Um, once the student graduates, they complete their obligation by working in IHS designated facilities that are located in health professional shortage areas. And so this program is much more strict because of its limitation on where um, graduated health professionals can complete their um, service obligation. Um, so I mentioned uh, the health profession scholarship on the previous slide, um, but let's go over the different types of scholarships offered through IHS and what kinds of commitments are required. Um, there are three different types of scholarships. Those are the preparatory, the pre-graduate, and the health profession scholarships. So the preparatory scholarships are open to members and descendants of federally or state recognized tribes as well as terminated tribes and villages. Individuals must be enrolled in preparatory or undergraduate prerequisite courses in preparation for enrolling in a health profession school. Essentially, the major that they have has to be relevant. Um, so unrelated majors aren't applicable. So majors like English or history or photography, they don't really qualify for this scholarship. Um, and it's important to note that this scholarship does not have a service obligation. The pre-graduate scholarship program is open to individuals that are members or descendants of federally or state recognized tribes, as well as those from terminated tribes and villages. Um, you have to be enrolled in courses leading to a bachelor's degree in either pre-medicine, pre-dentistry, pre-podiatry, or other subjects needed by Indian health programs. Um, for clarification on what those specifically are, contact IHS. Um, as they know in detail which those are. Uh, like the preparatory scholarship, there's no service obligation. And finally, the health profession scholarship. So this one's different uh, than the other two scholarships I mentioned because it does have a service obligation. So for every year of scholarship support, an individual is required to have one year of service with a minimum of two years. So four years of scholarship support, four years of service three years of scholarship support, three years of service. Uh, to qualify, you have to be a member of a federally recognized tribe or village, and you must also be enrolled in an eligible health profession degree program. The Indian Health Service Loan Repayment Program is similar to the NHSC program. Uh, however, priority is given to American Indian and Alaska Native applicants. All things being equal, the, um, the individual will be chosen over someone else. Uh, initial service awards are for $40,000, and then there's an additional $8,000, and that is to pay for the taxes associated with the receipt of the money. Unlike the National Health Service Corps, it's not tax-free, and that's why you receive that additional $8,000. Um, the initial service award is for two years, and it's full-time. You can continue the loan repayment if you do continue to serve. Um, undergraduate loans can be paid off as well through this program, um, just so long as they're relevant to the pursuit of their graduate degree. Uh, health professionals need to have a valid state license before they begin practicing, and students can apply uh, before they get their license, but they can't begin their service obligation until they provide proof of licensure. Uh, approved health profession disciplines include uh, acupuncturists, dental assistants, medical laboratory scientists, technicians, and diagnostic radiology technicians. Uh, there are over 40 different approved health profession disciplines uh, for the IHS loan repayment program. Um, and other professions are determined by the needs of specific um, Indian health programs. Unlike the IHS scholarship program, the IHS uh, loan repayment program offers more flexibility in terms of where uh, repayment recipients can choose to work. Uh, the Urban Indian uh, program has its facilities approved for service. Uh, there are over 230 different eligible health clinics and 48 uh, hospitals available. And I want to be clear about what an Indian health program is. 
according to the Indian Health Care Improvement Act, which is often known as um, IHCIA, um, an Indian health program is any health program or facility funded in whole or part by IHS for the benefit of American Indians and Alaska Natives. So programs or facilities um, must be administered uh, by the IHS or an Indian organization. So an urban Indian program uh, works for this. Right, and so here's a table that describes the awards that were given out in 2011 through this program. Um, there were a total of 701 awards given out. Uh, 407 were new awards uh, with a two-year initial commitment. 294 of the awards were contract extensions of one year. So you know that people are actually sticking around and two years isn't necessarily the only amount of time someone's going to spend. Uh, these extensions uh, are more evidence that two years isn't necessarily the only amount of time that they're going to spend at your site. And so just to be clear, where it says PA slash APN, that means phys physician assistants and advanced practice nurses. And so um, total in 2011, there was $59 million in average loan debt um, dealt with through this program. Okay, so there are, num there are a number of resources available if you have any questions or concerns about these programs. Um, I've included the phone numbers for the uh, National Health Service Corps and the specific phone numbers for the loan repayment and scholarship programs through the Indian Health Service. Um, you can also go to their websites for more information and resources. And so for IHS, it's ihs.gov and hrsa.gov. Okay. Anyone have any questions? 